G'day guys, welcome to today's video. I think I'm gonna vlog today because you guys have been missing the vlogs and um, some of you guys wonder if I'm even alive. I really appreciate the thoughtful comments and all the concerns for my absence from putting out videos on this channel. As you guys can see, I am at home. I have the van parked right behind me in the driveway. But yeah, I have been renovating and pretty much just destructing the inside of the van, tearing it apart because I really want it to be a livable, tiny home on wheels. I've been inspired by heaps of Pinterest accounts. Some really good designs. Like, I have some really, really good ideas that I really want to execute. I just replaced the bed. The bed, the original bed that was in the van was really narrow. As you guys saw from the previous video, I added a, a longer, wider mattress. The mattress was coming over the edge. So I've replaced the whole bed with a proper, it's a bed that I've been sleeping in at home. It's a super comfortable bed. And it's really inviting to have something comfortable to sleep on at night. Just to give you guys a quick update with the inside. As you can tell by first impression, the inside roof is being completely ripped out. If you guys remember, it was this sort of material and what we have here is tin along the sides and then up here is fiberglass with some rods along the middle there. Now I was really inspired to do like a wood roof, like pine wood linings going across the top of the top of the roof. We're going to have some kind of shelf storage that comes out off sort of here because and then I'll also want to replace this whole table and make it a bit wider so I have a decent kitchen sink preparation area and just a, an amazing kitchen working station kind of thing as you guys can see this bed is quite wide now I brought the bed right up to the back of the driver's seat because we had a small problem with the other side where the legs would hit this so I just turned it around now this bed only leaves for a little bit of a track to walk through to get to the front which I think should be fine but that's the only thing at the moment that is going to be a little different so just quick the overhead plan that I've drawn out it looks like a complete mess and it's probably not even legible right now but we've got the van bird's eye view here looking down the beds here this is the back door area side doors here this table that we're on right now is here driver's seats are here bench here another storage above storage compartment i might even make one above here which is over up around there and then right here really wanted to make like some kind of storage solution that goes up behind the passenger seat and you can store stuff like shelves up here so what i'm going to do now is answer some of you guys questions that you've left in the comments below i haven't done a q a in a while and i feel like i haven't really been replying to the comment as much as i would like to so there was a question from jason he said um also could you do a video on how you do the book thing with fba so i've been planning to make some kind of fba content for you guys in regards to like how I package, ship, source and pretty much just get books for sale on the dot com. And I've been meaning to put out this type of content but I just but I just haven't sat down and done it. So I think eventually I'll probably do something. But there is a heap of content out there already that if you just search for, particularly on YouTube, you can work it out pretty easily. What I'll do is I'll link down below some channels and maybe some particular videos that I can recommend for content and information to get you started instead of having to wait around for me to try and show you guys how to do it. It's probably a better idea just to check out these other YouTubers that are already in the game and killing it. So another question comes from Kimbo and it was, did you manage to plug the holes? And I have been having this one particular issue with the hole here. This up here, as you guys can see, I've got this bit of fabric just ripped across and you can tell it's really moldy and and just gross check that out like it looks just disgusting in here so i'm thinking of just peeling all this off and getting rid of all this old fabric as well but it was leaking down here and onto this table and also this curtain was getting soaked in the back curtain when it was there hey jet <whistles> so yeah at the moment i'm just trying to figure out where that water's coming from if it's somewhere up here or even further up on top of the roof. I'm not sure. Just gonna have to diagnose and figure out where that's coming from. I think I'm just gonna rip this out 
very soon. So the next question comes from Linda. How do you get the books to the US or is that what the FBA deal is here? What I do is I'm packaging up all these books. All these books. So all of these, this is my next shipment here. I can manage to get about this many books out. So you can imagine this, this, and this is one shipment that I'm getting out. And I'm sending all of that out in one box. The max box weight is 20 kilograms to the FBA fulfillment centers. And whenever it sells, they pack it up, send it out to the customer, and I don't have to touch it any further. It's a really good business model for van life. I found a killer score yesterday. Check this out. This book right here. I paid two freaking dollars. Watch this. You ready for this? Boom. Look at that, buy box is 137. 108 US dollars in profit, just for one book. That's what I'm talking about. So next question comes from Saint, uh, I think Sean Netting, sorry. Do you know what the exchange rate is in that America gives you from US to AUD? And do they charge a fee for converting the currency? I do believe now, it's raining right now, so this is going to be a good test for this leak. I reckon it's going to leak so bad. I think they do. I use like as a base currency converter to see how much I'm getting for my dollars worth. I'll go to Google conversions or just type in Google 1000 USD in AUD and it'll give me like the most current exchange rate. That's probably like 1300 from my guessing. But when Amazon disperse the payment into my bank account on Google, it's slightly under the Google amount. So they'll give me maybe a couple of dollars less. I think it's like maybe 2%, I don't know, maybe like 1%, something minute. So they're taking their little cut. I believe if, you, if you're gonna be selling huge numbers, Numbers, you're probably better off going to a currency conversion company. There's like this company that um, I was planning on signing up for when I was first starting where they can get you a cheaper rate or something like that. Might be worth looking into, but for me personally, I just let Amazon send me the money and they take a little bit of a fee for the conversion. So Craig, this isn't really a question, but I can elaborate on this a little bit. Great to see you back. Keep up the work with FBA and USA. Not sure AU is worth it yet. Now, from my experience, I'm not sure. I don't think it is either. I just want to add my two cents here. I am allowed to sell on Amazon Australia. However, I brought a couple of like RA items and nothing's really sold. I think it's still in its infancy. I think it's way too early. I don't know though, because some people have been doing pretty well I hear from private labeling on Australia. Like I was going to even try and see if I could sell these books here in Australia, but you're only allowed to sell brand new copies. Another question from Karen. Hey Cody, are you okay? No videos for a while, missing you. Hope all is okay. Yeah, so thank you for the concern, Karen. Everything's fine. Just taking a break from content creation. I was trying to structure my week by focusing on one thing every week. This is a really good way to develop a skill or something like that I've found so far. This is my second week into it. So the first week, I dropped everything and I focused solely on Amazon FBA. So I would watch content about FBA and buying used books to sell on Amazon. I would go out and just put in the hours to see what works, what doesn't work, trial and error kind of thing, and just focus all of my energy on this one thing, and that required me to drop making YouTube videos. Well, I guess I kind of stopped making YouTube videos there for a while anyway. So I thought, you know, I just might as well focus on one thing a week. And then once I've sort of semi-mastered or got some kind of idea of that skill from that whole week of focusing and zoning in on, on that, the next week I'll focus on something else. But if I can manage it, I will add that skill that I've learned on the previous week onto this existing week because it's a lot easier. I was finding like when I was trying to develop all of these different income streams, it was a challenge for me to understand all of them because it felt so so overwhelming. Like you got like 9, 10, 11 possible income streams, many, many more opportunities on the internet these days to make income. And I found I was just so overwhelmed because I wanted to build some kind of portfolio. And I'm just so impatient. Like I wanted to master all of them all at the same time. And to be honest, you just got to focus on one thing at a time. And, and yeah, that's the reason why I haven't been around is because I'm doing that. This week though, I am focusing on Amazon merch and also Etsy print on demand clothing with Printful integration and selling it on Etsy. And every day this far, I've made one sale, which is freaking ripper. And I'm hoping to increase that and make that an income stream with addition from the designs that I'm making for the Etsy for Amazon merch as well. I might do 
if I get the chance later on to create a video for you guys about how I'm managing to create designs, uploading them, and integrating Printful to Etsy. So then whenever you make a sale on Etsy, it automatically gets sent to Printful. They ship it and everything for you. You don't have to touch it. It's kind of passive, semi-passive, like you put in the work once, and whenever it sells, it sells kind of thing. And you don't have to do any more work like that. And I'm trying to create these income streams for my future and ideal lifestyle that I want to create. Living not in one fixed location. Yeah, that's going to work well for me. But I kind of just went completely off track there. But yeah, I have been away for a bit and I'm slowly getting back into making videos. So this is another good question that comes from Andrew. Great video again, Cody. And some of these questions were asked like a while ago and I just haven't answered them. How are you storing? your inventory in the van keep up the adventure doing it all digitally and then sending it out and not having to store the inventory I think it's such a better idea also CP came up with a pretty cool idea when we we're in Thailand for storing inventory when you want to do eBay and he suggested Whenever you get like a surplus or a certain amount of items is, you know, your max capacity of storage capabilities in your van or whatever. He suggested to, you know, pack it all up in a box, send it back home. And then if you've got someone at home to process it all, like mum, mums are great for that. Then it can be done that way. And I thought that was a really cool idea. The cargo box as well, which is a super awesome idea. I think I might look into getting something like that. I also got to leave some space up there for solar panels because that's coming up next is solar. Like before when I showed you guys the books, like that amount of books is pretty much one shipment. So by the time I get that much, I'm sending it out to Amazon. So then I don't have to hold it anymore. But if I was to do eBay, I would probably look for smaller items that are worth more and just store it somewhere in the van. That is why I'm wanting to sell more on FBA opposed to eBay. So then I don't have to hoard the inventory around with me. Anyway, moving on, considering the roof is fiberglass, I don't think it's gonna work having to drill the wood to the fiberglass because it's not gonna end very well. I mean, like there's a hole here and there is some metal on the other side of the fiberglass here. However, I just don't wanna risk it for the biscuit. So I had an alternative idea to get some battens, which will be these steel sort of rod things that are gonna run lengthways down the top. So I'll have three or four of them like here, and I'll have a little bit of a gap like this from the roof. Hopefully not too much so that I don't have to bend over even further, but enough so that when you get the board, the board's gonna go this way along here. I'll have a board here, I'll sit it up there and just z -z 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 drill it. And then hopefully the drill bits will go through and not hit the top. So I think that is uh, what we're gonna do for the roof. So I'm just doing some work here on the computer. I'm uploading some print on demand designs on Etsy. I've got about six up so far. Let me give you guys a bit of a look at some of the designs because I'm just starting up. I have about 100 listings on Etsy, which I think maybe 60 to 80 of those are actual print on demand products. The rest are just vintage items. But for example, this is one of the shirts that I've just posted, really taking advantage of people who were born in 1978 and it's their 40th birthday this year. So it's a very simple design. You just, you go to a free font site, you write out original 1978, put it on the tee and put it up for sale. Boom. Simple, simple design. And I reckon we're probably gonna sell a few of these. So if you are interested in making a bit more income through doing this, I'm gonna be putting out some videos to help you guys out and show you guys the process. Super simple process. And I'm making maybe, I think it's like 64% on each item. So it turns out to be around eight to about $12 in profit per item that sells, per t-shirt, per sweater and hoodie that sells, which is super awesome. However, guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you guys for watching today's video, but it's good to create some content for this channel and put it out to you guys. So thank you for watching. Make sure to give me a thumbs up for motivation and also drop some comments down below if you have any questions or any other video ideas or anything like that. Let me, let me know down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.